Today's webinar was opened by Dr. Eva Cotionco de la Paz. With the cover page of Time Magazine, it is an animated story of the Marvel characters with two with predictions for 2022. Here are the two scenarios, the two predictions. Scenario number one, the SARS-CoV-2 virus has achieved equilibrium with humans. The second scenario, the virus could keep changing in unpredictable and possibly deadly ways. So you've got the whole of 20 people to find out exactly which one will be the right scenario for us. Our first speaker is Professor Martin Hebert. He gave a brief overview of the virus, mechanisms of action of spread and modes of transmission, which we have extensively discussed in prior webinars. There is a worldwide effort to whole genome sequence of, uh, of SARS-CoV-2. And we now know that the different strains all evolved from mutations that occurred very early in the pandemic. So I'd like to encourage all of you to watch the replay and review first, the key mutations within the variants. Second, the distinct mutations found in, Om in Omicron BA.2. And third, the PCR diagnostics that can identify the three genes of the virus. And we've heard it this again and again as well as in the past conferences, despite the N2 and the E. Now, Omicron has been around. What, is, what we're knowing is that Omicron has been around, but initially not transmissible. So eventually it had mutations that became more, trans, more transmissible. So Dr. Martin warned us that the next variant could be one of the silent mutations, which will eventually become more transmissible. Dr. Martin gave a preview on the effect of Omicron uh, of the Omicron B8.2 in the UK, and uh, he said that uh, you know, and I think just the same like here in the Philippines and Singapore, the PCR is distinguishing the cell, the B8.2, but there is no clinical difference. Now, the UK is fortunate to have a national survey, and I think um, this really allowed them to see the real numbers and pictures in their population. So the random testing of households has revealed that 5% are positive for the Omicron. And um, the policies of uh, for testing have actually also increased the numbers. They said that with self-testing, the numbers really went up, but what they can see is that it is milder and there is less hospitalization. Dr. Martin said that the combination of vaccination and the lockdown are probably the two reasons why the numbers have brought down, the numbers of deaths have brought down. Now, um, there was a question on schools, and I know the, the audience is very keen to know what's happening, but the schools in the UK have remained open because of massive testing. Um, countries vary, and one of, one of his last slides actually showed that the risk of severe disease will really vary between countries. And it's for many reasons that we all know now, the vaccination rate, age, the, the age profile, the comorbidities, the element of mixing um, among, among the, the people in the population, healthcare access, and of course, the facilities for self-isolation and the support from the government. Now, in closing, Professor Martin said, this is what we have to accept. It is a nasty new disease that is here to stay. We expect new variants likely each year. The vaccination will need to be updated every year. And we need, we need new therapies because there will be those that will escape the vaccination uh, that's given to the patients. Our next speaker is Feistin uh, Xu Li Yang from Singapore, who shared the insights from Singapore. Uh, Omicron B8.2 entered their borders in January only of this year. They're very lucky because 90% of the total population is fully vaccinated, with 64% having received already a booster dose, maybe a a number that uh, we hope you can have in the Philippines. The lessons from SARS in 2003 helped them plan better. Singapore invokes the whole of government approach, very similar to what we have in the Philippines. But let me just mention what they consider as their definition of the whole government, whole government approach. A national effort coordinated by the multi-ministry task force set up to direct national um, uh, response to the outbreak number two, coordinated community response to protect all in Singapore and working with international community to respond to the outbreak. Now, the, the COVID-19 strategy in 2020 involves the enhanced surveillance, containment, active case finding, and reduced importation. 
Um, Vice Dean um, Lee Yang mentioned key moments in the COVID-19 story in Singapore. The first one is the migrant workers in the dormitory outbreak in April 2020. The second one is the Delta wave. And this is interesting because they said that the prior strategies of public health standards were no longer effective. And that's why they pushed for vaccinations, which is their key moment three. They needed a solid vaccine strategy. The key moment number four, in terms of the vaccines, I wanted to mention that they, they made an early negotiation to buy vaccines. They didn't want to make, they wanted to make sure they had the supply for their population. And their Singapore Airlines flew wherever the vaccines were to fly them back to the country. The key moment four was the vaccination rollout, very similar to the Philippines, which is a progressive phasing of, uh, uh, of the vaccination to the population. The key moment number five is misinformation. We also have this in the Philippines. And last but not least is the key moment six, which is the, the use of the various testing strategies that could be needed by the population at a particular time. Um, so just like in, um, in, um, in the UK, um, there is, as far as the BA2 is concerned, there is no difference in treatment as of this time. Our last speaker is Professor Cynthia Saloma, the Executive Director of the Philippine Genome Center. And she started by sharing actually the beginnings of the Philippine Genome Center, or PGC. It was established in 2009 to primarily provide sequencing services, especially at times when the borders close. And this is actually the time. To date, she reported that there are three, three 23,000 have had whole genome sequencing um, with alpha, beta, and delta. But just to, to highlight that since January, cases have all been the Omicron variant. So I would like you to watch the replay to review the evolution of the different variants in the Philippines, because she talks about when we had alpha, beta, delta, and then exactly when the Omicron entered the borders of uh, the country. Now, uh, as far as the Philippines is concerned, Dr. Salama said that it peaked actually, Omicron peaked, the, the variants peak usually two months later as compared to, the, to our neighbors because of our border controls. As for Omicron, the peak was actually in the second week of January. So to date, we have uh, more than 3,000 cases, mostly local, across, across the regions with 98% from uh, uh, being Omicron BA.2. So just allow me to mention a few points that is, she mentioned in the summer slide. Well, number one, genomic biosurveillance revealed a steep increase in the proportion of detected local Omicron cases from the last week of November 2021 and rapidly becoming dominant uh, the SARS-CoV-2 variant by the beginning of 2022. The second is the variant has now been detected in all regions of the country. And she pointed out that this, uh, the finding of the BE.2 primarily local as compared to the BE.1 that is found among the overseas workers is one reason we opened up our doors to foreign travelers because what we're getting is the local, is the local variant, not the one coming from overseas. Um, the overseas, overseas workers usually would pick up a variant from where they came from. Now, the apparent, the third point is the apparent clustering of Omicron cases from different regions suggests that suggests the porous borders and the hidden timelines of transmission. And definitely the it covers a wide age range, primarily between 20 to 40, being the working mobile population. So um, just like in Singapore and um and the UK, uh, our cases are mild. Uh, the cases we have picked up are primarily asymptomatic and uh, with mild symptoms. So in closing, here are some messages to remember from this webinar. First, let us brace ourselves in anticipation that this pandemic will soon be endemic. Second, as far for treatment of Omicron B8.2, there is no difference at this particular time. Third, Regardless of variants, as Dr. Eva said in the opening, important strategies remain, improve global surveillance efforts and increase genetic sequencing of the virus because knowing the genome of the circulating viruses can help provide the earliest hints of any changes and clues as to which of these changes could be dangerous for humans. And lastly, 
as shown in the closing slide of Vice Dean Li Yan, the future is living normally with COVID-19.